Thanks for staying with us. So if you're just tuning in, we are analyzing um, the, uh, what's it called, the, the statement by Namdi Kanu, the IPOP leader, and all the recent events around terrorism in Nigeria. Now, please let us share what you have to say. Remember, you can always join this conversation. Tweet at us at WeShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WeShow. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 And we also open our phone lines. For those that are watching via YouTube, you can always drop your comments as well. We started taking them. <laughs> so we get everybody included. All right, so um, let me hear your thoughts. You said you had uh, something that you wanted to say that um, oh. I didn't let you to land. You know, you're always accusing me of not letting <laughs> you to land. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, basically, what I was going to say was that the president should find a way to pass his messages across to us okay. in such a way that even if he's not the vocal type, then he should give us someone who is vocal enough to who he express, has given the power to, to express, express on his what behalf. he wants us to know. Mm. And it should be, you know, it should be... Um, as frequent as possible. Whenever there is a problem, he should carry us along. Yeah. Look at what happened with uh, um, when the, bo the boys were kidnapped in the, um, in the um, government college. Mm. What did he do? He went to the cattle farm, right? Yes, they're from his area. Mm. Yes, but at the end of the day, do we still feel that the president is for us? A poet well, President said, Jonathan, it, if you remember clearly, that time mm -hmm. Chibok thing happened, mm -hmm. I think it was one of the monarchs in Ibadan or so that was celebrating his party, if I, if I remember, because I remember taking that story. Okay. You know, he, was in, he, he went for the, the birthday celebration. So it, this is not this unique. Is, but wait that's now, one, I'm trying to say that. That's one off. Wait now, I'm trying to say the that this is not. President has done this subsequently. No, back I'm, to back. I'm saying that this is not unique to one person in Nigeria. Is it okay. possible that this is just. Um, Our attitude. This is just the the signs of who we have grew, become as a people. Where it is only me, myself, and I. I care about. I do not care about the next man. Because you see, we can all point fingers at the president of the mm -hmm. Federal Republic of Nigeria. But when it comes to even our small corners, our small spaces, do we truly care about the next man in no, Nigeria? I That's totally agree thing. with you. I totally agree with you on that point, but in this case, most of us who decided not to become the president of Nigeria, mm. we decided to put him there for a particular reason, reason. because we wanted him to represent our interests. Absolutely. And one other thing we need to also take into cognizance is this, that we are not looking for a Nigerian president mm. who is being tribalistic, who is be, who is who is um, um, sticking to a particular tribe or a particular sect of people. We are looking for the president of Nigeria. Mm. Nigerian president is different from the president of Nigeria. A Nigerian president would say, okay, we have people from this side. I would take these people and I would pull them closer. That, that's where the issue of tribalism, favoritism, nepotism actually comes to play. But when you have the, um, the, Nigerian, uh, the, the president of Nigeria, that is somebody who is actually looking out for the interest of the Nigerian people. And that is the kind of and president I want. want. Okay. All right, Maureen, let me come to you. Hmm. This matter is yes, so I just have, I have, I have something to add to what... Um, Isi said about how the president needs to, you know, find a way to communicate with us. You know, in, initially I stated that the president of Nigeria doesn't really care how we feel or what we think of. He does know how to communicate. When, um, what's this person's name? Joe Biden won election. Immediately, President Buhari tweeted, congratulations. If somebody is doing something or they give Bonaboy award, President Buhari will tweet, congratulations. So he does know how to converts. He doesn't know how to get his message out. He just doesn't care. Hmm. He doesn't ah. care. He's, well, he's, this he's, is below the belt. Action speaks louder, louder than, than words. words. So I understand. Yeah. You see, now we are now going back to what I initially said about body language. Because mm -hmm. it is one thing for you to say something. It's another thing for you to act it out. Exactly. Because his, his body language, truly, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, he, he, he knows how to congratulate people. He knows mm -hmm. how to felicitate with people. He knows how to send condolence messages, messages to people outside of the country that are going through hell. Mm -hmm. And people in your backyard here that are, are dying or maybe they are going through maybe flood or maybe they are being displaced by um, um, because Look of the militants. IDPs. Yes, the IDPs, they are being displaced. Oh. You don't know how to. But Mari, you have some comments with you. 
as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's heartbreaking. Her is from uh, Mary and she's from Benway and she said no to am amnesty for bandits. And the second one says, um, good evening ladies, PMB is full of tribalism. Before today's appointment of a new IGP, the Easterner has been asking for a balance in presidential appointment by appointing a new IGP from Eastern region. Mm -hmm. Now, an unrest happened on Sunday at Imo, which will give him a point to lean on for today's appointment. Who knows if the event is politically motivated from the presidency before the appointment, and this is from Ade. Yeah, Ade always joins us from the UK. Thank God our YouTube is working. <laughs> what, what that has just pointed out was mm. the federal character Hmm. not playing out in the system hmm. of appointing the leaders okay, so of I don't, people that I don't standing. know. I was just having a conversation with a friend of mine this mm -hmm. evening. You know, when, I mean, back in the days, yeah. um, a lot of people used to go into those military schools, the Air Force schools, the Navy school, Na naval Na schools and all of yeah. that. Because there was a, it was a plethora of, of different tribes Absolutely. and, yes, you know, going in. But how many... Easterners, how many Westerners are attending, you know, military schools today? So I don't know. That, that's just one question. This yes. is me asking. I'm not trying to justify exactly. him appointing a Northerner. But let me take Richard's call, our our favorite caller. <laughs> Thank you, Richard, for calling. Let's hear what you have to say. Thank you, guys. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. Um, this topic is uh, is there to my soul. Why am I saying this? Look at um. Why, I don't know why people are so bothered about the president talking to them. Hmm. The question I always ask them is that, what do you want him to say? Hmm. What he wanted was to be president of Nigeria. The first attempt, second attempt, third attempt, and the fourth attempt, he became president. That's all what he wanted. So if you want him to do something else, you're on your own. Hmm. Now, we what is happening in the After what happened on Sunday night, into Monday morning. First thing on Monday, the now removed IG started pointing fingers to IPOP. Mm. Everything has been happening in the north. He didn't point fingers at anybody. But this one just happened. You already started pointing fingers to IPOP. And thank God they got rid of him. They got rid of him and he's gone. What am I trying to say? If we want to live together in this country as one, this thing they call tribalism hmm. will never let it happen. Hmm. I'm not interested. I'm Igbo. An Igbo man being a president is not my problem. Whoever is president, be president of Nigeria. Exactly. Not be, not be president of your tribe or your religion. Be president of Nigeria. Give everybody equality. I love what Maury said. As long as, as soon as Biden became president, what did you do? The first thing he did was to make a speech. Till tomorrow he's talking, talking, talking. Why will your president never talk to anybody in this country? Hmm. I, I don't, I don't care about this in a country you are back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Richard. I, I, I mean, it's sad. <laughs> it's sad. But let, let's take more comments. Um, mm -hmm. Everything the president stood for during elections, he is on the left side of it today. That's from Haruna. Wow. Okay. Wow. People are not happy. Chisom says, um, hi guys, let's just go our different ways peacefully. The marriage is not by force. Wow. Wow. That's a tough one. That's from Benson. Yours is from Benson. Okay. Uh, if I may, can I respond to that? Yeah. Well, take Benson's anyway. comment first, then we'll respond to it. Well, it's just sad. Segmentation. Uh, this is from Benson. He says, segmentation done by our leaders weaken our collective strength. Our strength and unity is already inscribed in our national anthem and pledge. How many people can actually say that? Mm. Then, um, as Nigerians, leaders and followers need to understand this. Our diversity remains our strength. Our bandit leadership Only turns, bandit leadership. Okay. Only bandit leadership turns this upside, upside down. down. Absolutely. Thank you. So you are going to react to Chisom's um, let, letting us go our separate ways. Now, look, um, I don't know if you were born during the, the, the Biafran War. No, ma. No. I'm very young, ma. Neither was I. <laughs> but the key thing is this, that 
when we are talking about going our separate ways, how do you want us to go our separate ways? Mm. Do you want us to go our separate ways by force, or you want us to go our separate ways via this um, uh, um, the restructuring, or you want us to actually have some sort of federalism where we actually, you know, interact properly? Because any time there is war, you still have to settle it so on do you, the table. So you don't think we can so actually, because we had Dele Famoroti, uh, and he yes. said something about revolution, like revolving, mm. let's just take a ton, 360 ton around and look back and see how we can, because we don't mm -hmm. have to fight about this thing. Exactly. It, you have to be, you have to be, what's it called? It's about the mindset. Yeah, you have to be mature about it. You have to yes. be diplomatic. Is this working? Is this formula working? Exactly. If it is not working, how can we make it work? I mean, mm -hmm. yesterday, when we were talking about insecurity and also how we can, the implications of some of these things, somebody sent in a message about, you know, state policing, right? This is one thing that we've been talking about clamoring for that is still up till now, it seems like a tall order. But I which still is don't one, agree with that. Do you understand? And that should have been a very good way to curb some of these things because within the states, you are able to, you know. But mm. you see, let's just, um, I that don't is, know. If it's not um, used for the benefit of the politicians at the end of the day. Now, another thing that comes to mind, if, yes? Mori. Mori, you want to say something? Okay. So, Mori, sorry, she's, she's okay. there. Mori, can you hear me? Oh, okay. I think I lost her. Go ahead. Okay. I, I, I've lost my train of thought. Oh, okay. Thoughts. So, mm. segmentation done by our leaders weakens our collective strength, you know? I like this comment. It says, our strength mm -hmm. and unity is already inscribed in our national anthem and pledge. Exactly. You know, which we always say, but do we really mean it, you know? I don't know. Some of the <laughs> we politicians <just> we <laughs> have today, they can't even say the national anthem. It's not even not about saying it. Do if they can, understand? If you say it, can you understand mm. what you are saying? It's one thing for you so to say. So if you can't it. say it, how will you know? No, some of, no because it is a constitutional right for them to be able to read it when they are being sworn in and all of that. They they learn it, but do you understand the meaning? Have you mm -hmm. soaked it in to understand the meaning of mm -hmm. what you are talking about? They don't. It's a confession. They don't. Rafael Akori from um, Zaria has mm -hmm. sent in a message. He says, honestly, honestly, our security operatives' performance over the years are below accept are acceptable. Um, be below acceptable norms, rather. Mm -hmm. And the current leadership lack the capacity to provide um, solution. Solution, any solution mm -hmm. to the surge in the insecurity. This is the typical sentiment of everybody because it seems like, you know, there are no fresh heads. Now, this Deputy Inspector General of Police that has mm -hmm. been appointed, yes, he was, uh, he's been in the system Mm -hmm. He was directly under this, the, the outgoing Inspector General of Police. Mm -hmm. What was his input? You know, what was his input? Mm -hmm. All right, let me take so, someone from Kano. I think Itinu. Let me hear you. Ekene, Ekene from Kano. Thank you for calling. Let's hear what you have to say. Okay, um, what, what I have to share. Are you hearing me? Go ahead, please. We can hear you. Are you hearing me? Yes, go ahead, Ekene. Okay, what I have to say is that. The you, you people are doing a great work. You people are doing a great work. Thank you. And uh, and uh, you all have you all have said it all. The president doesn't care about the country, and uh, he's trying to you know like I don't know he's trying to put his brothers in defeat. Look at what is happening in the state. You you understand that the president doesn't care. Forget that they come out and say that I um, will bring this one to justice. Bring. He doesn't care whether they key or they key anybody. He doesn't care. So what I will have to say is, it's high time we stop um, caring if we talk or if we not talk. It's high time the youth of Nigeria move into action. That's why I love him, Navicado. I'm not saying that whatever he does, he does it right. But there are some things to say. We have to learn from him. You understand? So it's high time we stop complaining if he talk, if the president talk, or he did not talk. It's high time we move into actions. Mm. You understand? This is the this is the period. This is the thing we have to begin now. Thank and you, to wait for the president to talk. Thank you, Ekene. You know, there's something um, Inam Dikano said when he the last line when he says, "If this happens, then nobody deserves to be 
Um, if you can put up that quote again for me. Nobody, nobody deserves, deserves to, to be, be in any prison. In, yes, it says, yeah, it says so. No single soul deserves to be in any prison mm. in Nigeria because mm. they have... No. For this statement, uh, Ogana Bikano, this is wrong. Because there are some people that deserve jail terms. Mm. There are some people that have killed people. There are some people that have, you know, committed all series of um, atrocities Crime. on children, pedophilia, you know, they've murdered people and all of that. They deserve to be in jail, mm -hmm. right? So let's not say because somebody is doing wrong, we cannot justify somebody else's wrong. No, that's the point I'm trying to make. We must be able to separate issues. Let's not mix up issues because when we keep mixing up issues like this, we will never find a headway in Nigeria. We will always, always try to justify some of the actions that we take. I agree. But there is also something we should also take into cognizance. I agree with you totally. The sh people should be in prison and they deserve to be in prison. But there is also something that I, the, that just caught me. With this statement, what resonated with me was what the governor of Zamfara State said that he was going to expose those who were actually sponsoring the bandits. Yeah. Now, if the president had decided to step up immediately. If it was a southern governor that has said that, I think the, step, the governor would have said, the president would have said something about it immediately, mm. I think. But it's a, it's a northern governor, the governor of Zamfara State. But at the end of the day, the governor didn't say anything. He didn't expose anybody. Now, the key thing I want us to take from this is that if I was the governor and I know the people perpetrating all the evil in the country, won't I just send my, uh, my security personnel to, you know, pick them Wipe all them up? Out. Pick them up immediately. But in this case, what did the governor do? He was just talking. I will, I will expose. Is that a threat? In other words, is that a threat? So bearing this in mind, also, the president didn't even work on what the um, the 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 Zampara governor. You are talking as if you are not in Nigeria. Yes, Sorry, let I'm me saying talk to because you, I know. Look, I'm, just, I'm just stating the flaws in the system, and based on all of this, when the kidnappers kidnap the the floor members that mm -hmm. do go out to do the, to do the dirty mm -hmm. job, when they go out to kidnap, we, we bring them in, the police actually array them and say they have kidnapped one or two persons and killed one or two persons mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Meanwhile, we have the goons who are actually um, um, sponsoring, sponsoring them it. and yeah. nobody is doing Nobody's anything at, about I, I it. I understand what you're saying. That's what I'm looking you, at. But you are sounding like you're not in this country. I am in this country, but the thing <laughs> is, know? I'm just pointing out the flaws. Yes, we, we will keep on pointing the flaws because the flaws will always be <sighs> there because you, you the, the way you sounded is as if i mean there are promises that have been made like to your face yeah we've not seen it happen yes we've seen, even even then president jonathan said something about even knowing the people behind you know yes. this um, insecurity mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so we i mean this is not something that you know but you see these are the people that will say it and they're supposed to be the people that will they're supposed to arrest the people that I, so how do you, so Remember how do you expect, people in Dubai how, actually brought out some names of those know, who actually So how do, do you it? even expect us to solve the problem? If me, I am the, what's it called, the judge and the jury at the same time, you think I will convict, my, I mean, sorry, I'm the judge, the jury and the criminal. You think I will convict myself? I will not of course I will keep quiet and keep mute. So my point is, you know, I'm, I'm just saying that let's not mix up issues, you understand? With, so it um, is time for the people to step up. Mm -hmm. And it's not all about the president. We keep mm. calling the president, the president, the president. We the people. Everybody has to step we up. We need to step up. Let me up. take okay from Worry. It says, mixing up issues is why someone embezzles money mm. and we say leave our brother alone. Do you understand? It's the same, mm. it's the same thing. So for so, um, in, in trying to, to um, conclude the conversation today, mm. I understand and I, I, I'll keep saying, I 100% I understand in Ambikalu's um, sentiment, point of views. you know, his point of view. Mm. I am just saying that what we need to do is beyond just throwing blames and saying this. Yes, mm -hmm. it is so wrong. I mean, see the picture during the NSAS um, protest where mm -hmm. they juxtaposed that picture of um, the bandits that had uh, so-called uh, amnesty. They have they have rehabilitated them, all dressed up in white. You remember, they had a lot of them sitting down, and they now put. Peaceful protesters, you know. young peace, boys and yes. peaceful protesters. Peaceful protesters, you know, and almost banding, uh, what's it called, brandishing them as criminals. So this is a country that it seems like when you are in the right, 
you, you are, are in the wrong. You are in the wrong. You know, when you are you are, you are doing the right thing, you're in the wrong. So we must find a more creative way. So this statement by Inam Dikano is not going to lead us anywhere because mm -hmm. it will only lead us further into anarchy where, totally. you know, it will seem like, eh, oh yeah, now let us begin to release all the prisoners uh, all across the state. That will not solve the problem. Mm -hmm. It won't solve the problem. We need to face this government head on and tell them that no, you know, Banditry is banditry, um, terrorists are terrorists, and we should treat them as such. As such. Simple. And not trying to justify that, oh, nobody deserves, some people truly deserve to go, uh, they deserve to go to jail. Sleep there for you know? there. But I think we've, there we've had a fantastic conversation. We've had a fantastic conversation. Thank we can you. take any more comments. Thank you for all the people, to all the people that rather they're sending their comments and their calls. Um, tomorrow, I don't even know what we're talking about tomorrow. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> is, is the show over? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Maury, we lost you for a second. So can you just quickly give us one minute? Can you hear us, Maury? Yes. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you one minute because we lost you. Like I said initially, I don't think that Namdi Kanu meant the um, statement literally. You know, he was just trying to say that the government is focusing on the wrong, on the lesser problem. But I don't think that he actually meant that every prisoner should be released. He would not okay. um, give him the benefit of Doubt Let's give him that benefit that of doubt. Okay, that's, that's nice. Really that's also fair, fair on our side to give have him you, the benefit of have doubt. Have you heard him talk? <laughs> I don't think he was saying it with, literally. He was All saying right, it so. clear. Thank you again, everyone. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> All right, so Waze was birthed from the need to inform, inspire, and influence lives towards action. And this year, we started our CSR focused on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. So if you're a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you're a job... Seeker, keep watching ways and follow us on all our social media handles as this will be an all year round engagement. So tell your friends to keep all eyes on ways. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. This is a statement um, accredited to Namdi Khan. It says, If Mieti Allah terror headsmen, other murderous Fulani groups, including Boko Haram insurgents, can be arrested, freed, and rehabilitated by this new colonial Fulanized Nigerian president, then no single soul deserves to be in any prison in Nigeria. That's from Inamdikano. And we said, Inamdikano, please, this is not the solution to the problem that we're having. All right, we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. Yes. <laughs>